Coming up, those of us who voted to remain are often told to move on or get over it, but in this video we'll see that perhaps Brexiters should heed their own advice. Also, we'll take a look at what exactly has changed in post-Brexit Britain so far, so keep watching. If you enjoy our videos, it really helps us by clicking the like button, subscribing and getting notified of new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. So the Daily Express carried this headline yesterday, claiming that Covid quarantine rules in place within the EU is part of a vengeful travel war with the UK. I mean, there's a lot to unpack in this story, but I think the main takeaways are that first of all, quarantine appears to be a reasonable measure to impose on people arriving from a third country with higher infection rates than the EU. The fact that Daily Express has chosen to link this to the UK's so-called tough stance on Brexit kind of proves my point that it's pot and kettle time here, that maybe Brexiters themselves should move on and stop banging on about Brexit all the time. But what the Express spectacularly fails to realise, or perhaps chooses not to explain, is that post-Brexit, if anyone, it's the European Union that has taken back control of their borders. Impotent Britain can do nothing about this EU decision to impose quarantine rules on British visitors, whereas before Brexit, Brits couldn't have had this rule imposed on them by the EU as we were part of the EU. Sounds like yet one more disadvantage to Brexit, and it's hilarious how instead of reporting this as a negative fallout from Brexit, which it clearly is, the Express attempts to do a 180 degree turn and blame this decision on a mythical, vengeful EU in their alternate universe. This really is like a red pill, blue pill kind of moment. Also, this week has seen a new angle to the Twitter spat between Brexiters and those Remain voters who have been reporting nationwide shortages of stock in supermarkets, a situation, by the way, confirmed by both Tesco's and Sainsbury's, who have officially apologised for not being able to keep their shelves fully stocked due to the supply chain issues reported in our last video. Brexiters have been posting photos of fully stocked supermarket shelves in an attempt to disprove these claims of empty shelves, which have been confirmed by major retailers. Logic 101 tells you that this is on a par with those ex-patients who said that Harold Shipman was a caring and excellent GP and they never saw him murder anyone, or all those Tory ministers who say that Priti Patel can't be a bully because she's always been charming and friendly to them. But back to this Twitter spat and let's take a closer look at one of these photos, originally posted by at Noble Northern, I'm guessing as a wind-up. It's been retweeted by Leave voters as proof that empty shelves don't exist, but also also by Remain voters who have taken a closer look. You can see that the signage is all in Spanish. This is actually a Wikipedia image of a grocery store. Whatever at Noble Northerners true motives, one thing is clear. The Brexit debate is not going away, and neither side appears close to getting over it. The main post-Brexit changes reported in the news appear to be shortages in the supply chain and also asylum seekers coming across the channel, with the Royal National Lifeboat Institution being vilified by the right wing, and Priti Patel's cruelty finding a new outlet in her proposed draconian immigration bill. Of course, before Brexit, we could send asylum seekers back to France, but that is no longer an option post-Brexit it, as the UK has left the Dublin scheme, which allows countries to return asylum seekers to an EU state through which they have passed. Patel is now struggling to find another country that she can pack them off to instead. I for one am giddy from all this control that we've taken back. I mean sure, the UK is now free to set its own regulations, uh, within the conditions imposed by the Brexit trade deal that is, but we're not seeing this bonfire of Brussels red tape that we were promised by Boris Johnson and his cabal. Very little has changed in post-Brexit Britain, in fact, apart from, most obviously, the supply chain and immigration problems. And there are these other issues as well that I'm going to add to that list. Firstly, serious recruitment problems across transportation, hospitality and agriculture. All of these industries used to rely heavily on EU workers. And sure, 
COVID is a factor here, as huge numbers of EU workers returned to their homes when the pandemic hit. But Brexit means that the vast majority of those EU workers are not expected to return to the UK, as the end of freedom of movement means thousands are being refused entry to the UK, some even being detained or deported on arrival. A second major change post-Brexit has been the much-heralded ability to strike our own trade deals, and several have been struck, it's true, but even as a sum total, they are minuscule in comparison to the trade we've lost with the EU. As an example, the much-vaunted Australia deal adds 0.02% to UK gross domestic product over 15 years, whereas on the government's own figures, Brexit is forecast to leave the UK's economy 4% smaller than it would have been had we stayed within the EU. And that Australia trade deal that makes up one four hundredth of the shortfall in particular is worrying British farmers as they fear being undercut by products produced to lower environmental and animal welfare standards. They're increasingly diversifying into areas such as renewable energy and tourism to offset the loss of EU subsidies they enjoyed whilst within the European Union. So there are some changes and all of them seem to be for the worst. But what is most striking is how little of this new control that we're meant to have taken back has actually been utilised by the Johnson government. It feels more like a leaderless drift towards a smaller economy, struggling agricultural and hospitality sectors, a crippled supply chain, and a more insular yet aggressive approach to global relations. Welcome to post-Brexit Britain.